It also may be a great time in our country's history where we rethink whether or not we have public schools. Maybe we should not have the government involved in education at all uh, so parents and teachers and administrators can make those decisions themselves instead of having the government impose it on them because it is the public school aspect of this that is creating the legal challenge. That was Fox News's Kennedy saying the quiet parts out loud, uh, arguing, hey, maybe uh, free education uh, for young kids in this country shouldn't exist anymore. Maybe we need to go to a completely private model where only those who can afford education would get educated. Uh, that's really what she's saying there. And this was in the context of a discussion regarding uh, a case that's being heard before the Supreme Court. It has to do with a former Football coach for a public school who kept praying, who would pray in the locker rooms and that would coerce other students to pray. So it's this big controversial case that again, the Supreme Court is currently listening to. Before we get to the details of that though, I wanna to get to the shocking moment where Harris Faulkner actually decided to ask, well, what happens to people who can't afford private school for their kids if we do away with public schools? And pay attention to how Kennedy doesn't answer the question. And what yeah. do we do with the people who can't afford private? Like, what does that look like? Because each state allots some money, so they would get that money, I would assume. Is that what Florida could wanted do to do? That's what Florida yeah, did. Yeah, that's what Florida wanted to do. Yeah, you could have, you could have, we could entirely rethink. Okay, I'll tell you why I say that. It's because the two most powerful teachers unions in the country are opposed to Coach Kennedy. They, they are using their, their heft and their influence to make sure that he loses this case. Yeah, we'll get back to Coach Kennedy in just a second. But notice how Kennedy didn't answer that question. And what was floated was like, yeah, yeah, vouchers, vouchers, yeah. We can, we can rely on right wingers who are obsessed with austerity to give vouchers to people who can't afford pub, uh, private schools. And that'll help uh, fund the whole private school situation if they want their kids to get an education. Uh, except we know how that's gonna play out, right? You guys know how that's gonna play out. Anyone who's stupid enough or naive enough to think that the government on a state level is going to funnel money to parents who can't afford private school for their kids for the long term is just, you're not paying attention to what's happening in the country. They want to preserve education for the rich. They don't want public schools because they don't want property taxes, property taxes they pay to go to public schools. That's what this is all about. And this is what the, look, the constant attacks on public schools, you know, that revolve around culture war narratives, it isn't even about that particular culture war narrative. That's just an avenue in which they're accumulating power to do away with what little we have left in social spending in this country, including spending toward public education. So in the old days, um, there used to be education as well, um, before there were any public schools. Uh, and who got that education? Only the rich. So you would hire a governess and the governess would teach uh, your kids if you were incredibly wealthy and you had the mansion and she would come over, you've seen the sound of music. Um, and so that's a tradition that goes back a long time. Um, and then some areas in the world started doing public education. And Scotland was one of the first to do it. And uh, and then Scotland actually had the enlightenment before France did. And so, and all of a sudden all these geniuses started popping up in Scotland, Adam Smith, David Hume, etc. People are like, what is going on in Scotland? Well, what was going on it was they started public education. And when they did, they educated a lot more people. And instead of having a tiny minority of the population, the very, very rich getting an education, they had a much larger number of people in Scotland getting an education. And it turns out poor people and middle class people are really smart too. So their sons and daughters would get the education or in the beginning the sons. And lo and behold, in that wider group of people, you would find more geniuses and more amazing minds that never had an opportunity before. And when they get the opportunity, they create things like, by the way, funny enough, Adam Smith, you know, created the, the modern ideas behind what we call capitalism today, okay? So I'm sure the right wing would be happy about that. Now the right wing is trying to go back to the medieval system where no, 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 no. I and mean, we'll give you a couple of vouchers here and they're like food stamps. 
And, you know, good luck it's, to you. It's a win-win for them. Yeah. You think, gonna... you think Kennedy's worried about being able to afford private education for her kids? You think anyone on that panel is concerned about providing a private education for their kids? Not a single one of them is concerned about that. Yeah. And again, I want you to remember these talking points and what they genuinely want to do when they start pretending like they're populists who understand the economic anxiety of Americans. Many of whom, by the way, are dealing with $1.7 trillion in student loan debt for higher education. Imagine what that number would be if we privatized all education, including grade school. So it's a win win for the right wing because they're shoveling money to private corporations that would run private schools. right? And so those are almost all Republican donors and the rich get richer. And then the second win is, oh, the education system for the poor and the middle class will be devastated, totally destroyed, right? Easy to control and an unge uneducated public. Absolutely, that's why the number one rule of the slave master was do not educate the slaves. What happened? I thought you thought they were in fury. No, they knew, they knew all along. Education is the most dangerous thing for the upper classes because they think that people might rise. I even heard one person say it in my real life. They said, why would you want to give education to everyone? That way they will compete with our kids. I was like, what? And people, and color me naive, right? But people actually believe that. They think, I want to keep you down so you don't compete with me or my kids. So really without public schools, we're gonna, all of the rest of us don't get any chance at all. My parents couldn't afford private school when I was going. Back when I was going to school, we had good public schools in New Jersey. So I went to a really good public school and I got a great education. And by the way, what did I do? Now you can disagree with me on politics. I would prefer that you agree, okay? But I started a company and if you're a right winger, I created hundreds of jobs and that helps the economy because I got a good public school education. But they wanna destroy all that because of infinite greed. Yeah, infinite greed and what they will do is defund a lot of these school systems. And then they'll turn around as these school systems are failing across the country, be like, see public schools fail. Yeah, okay, well let me take away your source of income in your household. And then when you you know file for bankruptcy, just point to you and be like, hi, hey, you failed, you failed. You're not financially responsible, you failed. Took away your source of income, but hey, you failed. You don't know how to balance a checkbook, loser. That's what they do across the, the country over and over and over again. Or they take out the funding and use it for the vouchers for private schools. And of course, perfect marketing, they do a good job with the marketing. It's school choice. We want the parents to decide, we want the parents to have a say in, in what kind of education their, their kids get. But the second that those public schools are gone, those parents who got suckered into taking their kids into these private schools are screwed. Because who's gonna help you out now? Who's gonna help you fund your kids grade school education? Yeah, and I guarantee you the minute they turn into a voucher, if that's what they did, um, they would then say, oh, the poor keep taking all of our money, man. Oh, no, no, we're gonna limit it. That's exactly what's okay. gonna happen. That's exactly what they did with food stamps. Bootstraps, it. where are your bootstraps? Figure out bootstraps to pay for your kid's education. Yeah. That's what'll happen. And, and I'm telling you, man, look, by the way, apparently their kids are losers. I, and I, and I'm not blaming their kids. Their kids are perfectly like we don't know them. We want to leave no, them alone. No, let's blame them too. Okay, no, 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 no. I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, no, no, <laughs> they think their kids are losers because I don't need to make sure that nobody else's kid gets an education for my kids to do well in school. I mean, how little do you think of your own kids? Oh no, 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 let's make sure that nobody else gets an education, okay? So that my kids, who apparently they think are, they could barely have a leg up. No, but Jenk, whether or not other kids get an education, they don't care. All they're thinking about is, why am I helping to fund public education for other people's kids? Like that's, yeah, they hate that system. Yeah, there's just no end to the goddamn greed. That's okay, it. Okay, and so look, one more thing. Politically, this should be a slam dunk for Democrats. But the Democrats don't know any slam. If you gave them a ball and put it right above the rim, they would find a way to screw it up, okay? So why don't you call it a war on teachers? Because you know what it is? It's a war on teachers. They're constantly attacking the teachers, belittling them. She talked in that segment about all oh, the union teachers. They're the real problem, these teachers, right? Ah, collecting $45,000 a year, high off their own power. Right, that's why we should only have education for millionaires and billionaires. So it's goddamn $45,000 a year making teachers out of the problem. And, and oh, they shouldn't teach this, they shouldn't teach that. And it's all oh, the teachers brought the wrong books in. It's a nonstop war on teachers.
But it would require a, someone in Democratic leadership that has more than three brain cells. And also, it is a little difficult for the Democratic Party to, uh, you know, place themselves as the savior of uh, unionized teachers when they themselves have engaged in a pretty widespread, uh, you know, charter school effort essentially uh, that started under the Obama administration and continues uh, with uh, Democrats. And so why do they do that? Because the Democrats. Are not trying to take away education from your kids, but the ones that are pushing for the charter schools have said it not that they care, right? But they're not pushing for it. No, they're doing it because they also have super rich friends who own private schools, and all of their kids go to private schools. So to them, they're like, oh, I do declare, of course, everyone should be going to private schools. That's what the Obamas say. That's what almost all the Democratic leadership says. So they're not on our side. They are elitists. And they do take the same corporate money. It's the same story over and over. All right, now let's get to this whole controversy with the coach. You might have a different take than me, but I'm I'm getting to a point where I'm so like, dude, keep your freaking religion to yourself. Seriously, we're we're not supposed like the constant like, oh, to take my religion and shove it down your throat. It's unbelievable. Okay, so what's happening? Well, there's a former. Football coach, uh, former football coach, who was uh, leading prayer sessions at the public school that he coaches or coached at, and uh, now this case has made its way to the Supreme Court. He's no longer employed as a football coach because he's doing something that he's not supposed to do as someone who works at a public school, which is lead prayer sessions. It's a public school. This is. This is the most basic thing to understand. Now, if he himself wants to engage in his own prayer, if he wants to kneel and pray to himself, have at it. But when you do it in a locker room, players feel pressure to join the coach. So let me give you the details. The Supreme Court's hearing this, and its conservative majority seem to be searching for a narrow way to rule in favor of former high school football coach Joseph Kennedy, who lost his job for praying at the 50 yard line after his team's games. Now, he would also lead these prayers in the locker room. The school district in Bremerton, Washington was like, yo, you can't be doing this. This is a public school and we can't be endorsing one religion over the other. You know, we're just supposed to stay out of religious issues. But he couldn't help himself. So Richard Katsky, a lawyer from the school district, said the school was entitled to require that its employees refrain from public prayer if students were likely to feel coerced into participating. But conservative Supreme Court justices engaged in this line of questioning while hearing this case that makes you think, oh, they're trying to find a way to side with the, the coach here, even though what he did is you know, it's just unprecedented within these public schools. The tenor of the questioning from the court's conservative members was unsurprising as four of them had issued a statement questioning a preliminary ruling in favor of the officials from the US Circuit Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco. After further proceedings, a unanimous three judge panel of the Ninth Circuit again ruled against Kennedy, this is the coach, saying that school officials were entitled to forbid his public prayers to avoid a potential violation of the First Amendment's prohibition of government establishment of religion, okay? So here's what Judge Milan Smith Jr. said in that ruling. He led the team in prayer in the locker room before each game, and some players began to join him for his post game prayer too, where his practice ultimately evolved, in, evolved to include full blown religious speeches to and prayers with players from both teams after the game, conducted while the players were still on the field and while fans remained in the stands. Now, the Ninth Circuit's understanding of the free speech rights of public school teachers is troubling. Um, and may justify review in the future, Justice Alito wrote at the time. He was joined by Justices Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh and of course, Clarence Thomas. So the conservative justices clearly disagree with the Ninth Circuit and think that educators, coaches, administrators in public schools can go ahead and lead prayer sessions, even though they're government employees who shouldn't be endorsing any specific religion. Yeah. So this case, along with the tide of history, has made me switch my position on this. So Anna has said we might disagree because in the past, a coach that was in the national news 
about a similar issue was my high school football coach. And I remember Coach Borden doing a very innocuous prayer where, and at the time in high school and college, I switched between Muslim and atheist a couple of times. I forget what I was back when he was doing the prayer. But obviously, I wasn't participating in the prayer either way. It was a Christian prayer, but I didn't mind it one bit because when they were praying for people's health, it was very limited, no big deal. And that's was my experience with praying on a football team, okay? But now you see this case. Now all of a sudden everybody's involved, he's bringing all the kids in and he's doing it on the 50 yard line, thereby creating pressure, very public pressure. Are you coming out to pray with us or are you not? Now maybe he's taking notes, maybe he isn't, maybe that affects your playing time and you're thinking about that. But even if he isn't doing that, everybody in the stands is watching, okay? And if you don't live in a religious community, you might think, what's the big deal? So what, right? But a lot of communities think, oh, you're not going out to pray? Oh, we gotta shun that person. Not only that, be careful what you wish for. Because while you might be totally fine with a Christian prayer on the field and a, a, a Christian coach praying with students or, or players in the locker room, what if you've got a Muslim coach? What if you've got a coach that has a religion that you disagree with? You really wanna open those floodgates? Have at it, let's have fun, let's do it. What if it's a, a Satanist who decides they wanna do a Satanist prayer? If, if that's what they do, I don't know if Satanists do prayers, probably yeah, not. Um, uh, I guarantee you that they'll lose their minds, they'll pass laws against yeah. it, etc. And they're like, did you know we should not establish a religion? I know, it's in the Constitution, in fact, it's in the First Amendment. Uh, and, and I was saying the same thing. I mean, look, especially in this day and age, that's why I mentioned the tide of history. With right wing getting more and more extreme, oh, they're gonna, like, if you open up the gates a little bit here, the floodgates will just pour open. They'll do the most religious, they'll turn the football game into a giant religious ceremony, right? And what if it isn't your religion? Let's say I was thinking Pentecostal, right? So they're like, oh, no, 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 not a big deal. It's all voluntary and stuff, but we're gonna take a snake and we're gonna wrap it around all the kids. And that's what Pente some Pentecostals do that, right? Or Orthodox, I don't want to even- No, let's bring it. snakes in the locker room, why not? Okay, I mean, there's some goddamn snakes in this goddamn locker room. <laughs> I'm cleaning it up, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, that's because the Supreme Court allowed it, they haven't yet. So um, look, last thing on this, the substance of the Supreme Court arguments. They say, well, look, it's, you know, the conservatives on the court say it might be a free speech issue. He's just saying how much he loves the Lord Jesus Christ, right? No, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're conflating issues and you know it. They're smart enough to know that, mm -hmm. right? The First Amendment has several clauses. One is the freedom of speech. Another one has a specific prohibition. We shall not establish a religion. You could even think that it's a qualifier to the rest of the First Amendment. You could say anything you want, but the government cannot say that you have to be a part of a religion, either a religion or any religion, right? So it's a, it's an obviously false argument. That's why the elitists of the world are almost winking and nodding. Oh, well, technically, there is the freedom of speech, wink, wink. When he knows that doesn't apply in this particular case, and he's doing all of these ridiculous arguments that he knows are false. He's like, well, what if he wanted to do uh, you know, a, a tribute to uh, Black Lives Matter? Like, oh, yeah, what if he liked black people, boo, right? No, but guys, that isn't the same thing because there's a very specific clause in the Constitution saying you cannot do this thing, right? And what? so I, they could have other political opinions. They could be left wing, they could be right wing. That doesn't matter at all. What matters is the religion part. Can we just like have our own beliefs and, and keep it to ourselves and not pressure others or coerce others to buy into whatever voodoo like we believe in, right? Yeah. Like, like, don't, like the nonstop preaching, the nonstop, like, oh, these are my religious values. I'm gonna force them on you. This is what my Bible tells me, although my Bible doesn't actually tell me this. And I'm ignoring all the other parts of the Bible that are a little unsavory and I don't really believe in. But nonetheless, I'm gonna force you to have the same values that I just keep it to yourself. Again, if this coach wanted to go to a corner somewhere and, and do his prayers and not have this locker room situation, where inevitably, he's a person in a position of power. Inevitably, the players who probably want to impress him are gonna feel pressure to take part in this like freaking Bible study group that's taken place. Or else he, you might be worried that he's looking down at you, he might not choose you, he might bench you, whatever it is, right? We're talking about a person in a position of power. Just keep your religious values to yourself and stop forcing everyone else. Like the people who send me Bibles, 
go ahead and keep sending me Bibles. The, the trash can is starving, okay? Yeah, I have no problem throwing it in the trash. I did not solicit that Bible, I don't want that Bible. I did not solicit your political or more importantly, your religious opinions about what I can do or can't do with my life. No. We're supposed to live in a free society where we're free to have whatever religious beliefs we want, whatever religious beliefs we don't want. And clearly, there's a huge portion of this country that does not believe in that or respect that. Yeah, you know, come to think of it, I always used to give my coach a pass, even though we really didn't like each other. And uh, and he wouldn't give me a recommendation, even though I was actually a very good player on a nationally ranked team. Oh, he wouldn't give you a recommendation. Yeah, oh. and and you know, thinking back on it, I didn't participate in the prayers. Did that bother him? I don't know. I can't read his mind. Well, you're, right? you know, you're not a good Christian, you're just a dirty Muslim. Yeah, so. I don't know if he thought that. I assumed that he didn't. I assumed he disliked me for other reasons. Plenty of people do, okay? <laughs> but maybe he disliked me for that reason. Can you see why? Hey, look, when Anna's making the point on in your personal lives, the proselytizing is super annoying, but that is still a choice, right? And nobody's ever gonna stop this coach from praying in his own house, in his own way, in his own church. But when you have an official figure, and he works for the United, he works for the government, a government official saying, no, now we're all praying. That's obviously establishing a religion, and you obviously can't do it. But I don't know, maybe we just get rid of public schools. Maybe that's the answer, according to Kennedy on Fox News. Garbage people saying garbage things. Another day in America. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.